It's almost impossible for us to imagine a world where there is no recorded sound. The Smithsonian has a very hmm, large collection, relatively speaking, of some of the earliest sound recordings anywhere in the world. We have examples from the Volta Laboratory here in Washington, D.C. The Volta Laboratory was the sound laboratory for Alexander Graham Bell, his cousin Chichester Bell, and a, a mechanician, an instrument maker named Charles Sumner Tainter. From this Volta Laboratory come all kinds of sound recording experiments, and that is the bulk of our collection. We have lots of documentation to record what they did when. In these early sound recordings, we have about 200 sound recordings from 1881 to 1885 from this Volta laboratory. And it's these that um, Carl and Peter have been um, extracting sound from. I think it's really important that we now have a process, a new invention in the service of invention to get sound off of these virtually unplayable recordings. We are here in the imaging laboratory in the preservation directorate at the Library of Congress. We have here a, a, a laboratory, a set of instruments that were developed initially to image the, the more common sound recording materials so that we could play them non-invasively and with uh, computer automated tools that allowed very efficient transfer of the information. Um, we have one device over here and this is a turntable which will rotate under the control of a computer and this is a type of camera. It's a three-dimensional camera so it takes pictures not only of left and right of the scene but also of the distance, the depth. Okay? So it can create, if you like, a topographic picture. And this kind of looks like a photograph to people, but it's actually not a photograph, it's a depth image. So the black are actually the grooves. When you listen to one of these things for the first time, it's, it's often um, confusing or almost inaudible what, what is being said. And uh, my experience is that once you know what's being said, it's actually pretty easy to conclude that that's indeed what's being said. So I'm going to play this for you. now. It's long and there's a lot of variety of what they say, which is going to abruptly stop in mid-verse and someone is going to make a, 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 a clearly disappointed exclamation. You can decide yourself what you think they're saying, but it does sound like they're disappointed. At that point, the, the first part of the record ends. Something apparently went wrong. Okay? So, it's, an, it's, a, it's probably the first recorded example of somebody being disappointed. Hey. 